Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships and we're pretty much carrying on right from where we left off in my last World of Warships video. It's the Kings of the Sea finals between Omni and Odom Mortis. Omni of course had won the first two games in the finals without losing a single ship which put Odom Mortis into a tough position as they went into the third game but they managed to clutch a win and keep themselves in the run for the title. We're now going into the fourth match, however we're going to join this match more or less halfway through because this replay is from the perspective of Isolate who was commentating on the match as a spectator live on Twitch. Isolate had run into an issue with a game client and had to restart and this is the point where we enter the battle. Having just missed a very important move created by Griff in Odin Mortis's Amagi and exploited upon by Evil Skywalker in one of Odin Mortis's Kuchizovs by eliminating the hero of the previous match, RNG Sama, in his Chapaev, and with the loss of the Chapaev, at a crucial point in the game, Omni are now without radar. So things are not looking good for the defending champions, Omni. Not only have they lost their radar cruiser, but Oda Mortis also hold three of the four capture points, although Omni are managing to contest Charlie at this point to slow down the rate at which Oda Mortis keep farming points. Working hard to try to capture that point, for Omni are Flambass in the Benson and Elrog in the Akizuki. They're about to be momentarily spotted by some fighters launched by Cam Nix in the Shikaku who's taken over for x Brown from the previous match while he takes a break. Elrog's Akizuki immediately goes and detect it again and Flambass has himself a little bit of a brown trouser alert there as he comes under a sustained volley of fire in his Benson before managing to slip back into the relative safety of the smokescreen. But he did manage to get his torpedoes away and they came as a nasty surprise to Van der Decken there in the Odin Mortis Benson as he narrowly avoided them while peeping out of the smokescreen in order to get his own torpedoes fired off in the opposite direction. Tucked in behind the island over there you can see Jolnuts in the North Carolina and Absolute Dominance momentarily in the Kuchizov but they're kind of well hidden and they're not attracting a huge amount of fire and that's mostly because there's a far juicier target over here out on the flank with no cover Strangers 123 in the Alabama ST. Although he's given as good as he's getting because he's managed to inflict some grievous damage on Griff's Amagi here and he's continuing to pile the shots into him and he's not out there completely alone either as you can tell by the torpedoes that have been fired into this smoke screen which is going to make it difficult for Griff if he wants to avoid taking a torpedo in the bows to get into the cover of that smoke screen quickly enough to avoid taking any more fire. Both teams now have control of two capture points thanks to Flambass in the Benson and Elrog in the Akizuki Omni have managed to capture Charlie. But Odin Mortis still have the lead in points and as if the smoke screen that just appeared over there wasn't enough confirmation that strangers didn't do something suicidal and try to rush a flank alone in an Alabama we momentarily spotted FTD in Omni's low yang as if the torpedoes that were fired in this direction weren't enough of a giveaway. Odin Mortis cannot afford to lose any more ships at the moment if they're going to hold on to that bare 100 point lead and that was a lovely torpedo drop. Can Nix uh, sacrificing his torpedo bombers in order to get the payload away but with a low yang and an Alabama hidden inside that smoke screen it was definitely worth the sacrifice. Meanwhile over here it's Radical Larry and he's about to start showing why he earned himself the name Larry the Carry in this particular match as he fires completely blind into that smoke screen and nukes absolute dominance in his Kuchizov. And as the torpedoes fired by the legend begins into that smoke screen, fail to find the target, remember Geolinitz is hiding in there as well, also in a North Carolina, Radical Larry is now setting his sights on another target, XTHD, right there, in his North Carolina, who's putting some very effective fire into Griff's Amagi as he desperately tries to shield himself around the side of this island, but pay attention to the back of the map, Larry the Carry, there he goes, shots out, XTHD no longer spotted, but that's not going to stop Larry the Carry. <laughs> he sunk him anyway, his second kill. Unfortunately not in time to save Griff, who got himself taken out by Geolinuts in the North Carolina, which was hidden in the smoke screen over there, but has now popped up. Meanwhile, back at the other end of the map, it's all kicking off between FTD and the Low Yang, and the legend begins in the Benson. And the legend begins did have the health advantage until he catches a whole bunch of armor-piercing overpenetrations right in the face from Strangers 123 in the Alabama back there, but it's the final hit from FTD's Low Yang that is going to seal his fate because it has set him on fire, he is burning, and that is going to kill him. 
Meanwhile, Imperator of Chaos and the surviving Kuchisov starts laying his own smokescreen, obviously with a low yang right around the other side of that island. And let's not forget the Alabama, <laughs> nosing his way around the corner, driven by Strangers 123. Slightly off camera, Decliner in the Chapayev, waiting for his radar to come off cooldown, is providing some support fire and putting some pretty effective shots into Strangers 123. Imperator of Chaos gets his torpedoes away burning, bleeding health, and coming under sustained and accurate cruiser fire without any clear targets to shoot at himself, Strangers 123 elects to turn away. But Giolanuts, anxious to not catch it from Radical Larry's Amagi, has managed to run right into a huge torpedo salvo, fired by Van der Decken in the Benson. That's now put Odom Mortis ahead by 200 points, and Strangers 123, still spotted, has just attracted some very unwelcome attention. Not just from Imperator of Chaos in the Kutuzov and Decliner in the Chapayev to the rear who's continuing to rain shots down in on him, but also from Can Nick's Extreme in the Shikaku who's about to launch a torpedo strike. And speaking of which, could this be the end for our hero, Larry the Carry? No, he's managed to avoid those. Although they, at least one of them did seem to scrape the paint on his Amaki. <laughs> and here comes the torpedo and dive bomber strike on Strangers 1, 2, 3. FTD's Lo Yang spotted, but it's Strangers 123 that they want to finish off, and Candix Extreme takes the kill. Odin Mortis are now on 941 points, and two of Omni's surviving destroyers have been spotted on low health as FTD furiously ducks back into cover around the side of the island. Elrog in the Akazuki ducks back into the smoke screen, which could be terrible news for Imperator of Chaos in the Kuchisov, if not for Decliner. In the Chapaya, who picks the precisely correct moment to use his radar, exposing Elrog in the smokescreen, Imperator of Chaos kills him, and with FTD's Lo Yang hidden, that's incredibly bad news for Flambass's Benson, as everybody starts shooting at him, but it's Larry the Carry once again who claims his third kill, and the final kill of the game, putting Odin Mortis on a thousand points, and winning their second match out of five, which means that we're now going into a tiebreaker, Odin Mortis, two games to two against Omni, the defending champions as we go into the final match of the Kings of the Sea series to decide who's going to win the title. And since we've only really seen eight minutes of this match, we're going to go straight into that final tiebreaker match right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a tiebreaker. We have a couple of subtle changes in the team lineups in this match. They're swapping out the carrier players. x Brow returns from the third game, replacing Kamnik's Extreme in the Shikaku. Likewise, we've got Rater playing the Shikaku for Odin Mortis. Odin Mortis are also dropping the three destroyer lineup with uh, FTD taking a back seat in this match and Elrog swapping out the Akazuki for a Benson. Dropping the third destroyer gives them another cruiser to play with, and so we're welcoming Tortured Torpedo in the Kuchizov to the final. Other than swapping out their carrier player, however, Odin Mortis's lineup remains pretty much exactly the same. The scores are going to settle down at 240 points each once the three spectators on each team have managed to successfully remove themselves from the game. And it was here, right at the start of the match, when we got our first major plot twist. The Cyclone is arriving. And nobody likes it when an RNG steps in and introduces the Cyclone into the game, because it means that all of the carefully laid plans and tactics that both teams have established before going into the match are now completely out of the window, and it's the team that reacts best to the lowered visibility that the Cyclone imposes that stands the best chance of winning this match. For now, however, while well, they still have a few minutes before the Cyclone arrives, and it looks as if Odin Mortis are going to stick to their original plan, give up control of Capture Point Charlie to Omni, and Omni have already taken Charlie, and instead dominate Alpha and Bravo, hold on to those and try to establish an early lead. And you can see over at Bravo here exactly how they plan to do that. The legend begins in the Benson, has laid a smoke screen to allow the supporting cruisers and battleships to get into position and help him defend Bravo while he attempts to capture tucked in behind that island there. Strangers 1, 2, 3, uh, this time in an Amagi rather than the Alabama, already spotted, already coming under fire. They've also managed to spot Ginger General in the Kuchizov, but they're continuing to focus their fire on Strangers 1, 2, 3. And it's unclear exactly at this point how many of all of these Odin Mortis ships have actually currently been spotted. Although it looks like some fire is definitely going into at least one of them, but they're unlikely to have seen the Benson that's just launched torpedoes, and I'm pretty sure that Strangers 123 is actually firing blind to that smoke screen down there. 
and he's doing all right. I mean, he's lost a fair bit of health, but he hasn't been set on fire. He hasn't had to use his damage control. And that blind fire didn't miss by much. But I think Omni are going to be forced to rethink their tactics here, because while they do hold Charlie... Oh, have those torpedoes been spotted? Yeah, it, he's turning away. It looks like they've decided to give up, because they just don't know how strong Odomortis' force is. They're strong enough to have already captured Alpha, and they're attracting lots and lots of fire from a whole bunch of ships that they cannot see. So, rather than rush headlong into the unknown, I think Omni have decided that it's not worth losing ships, going up against what's probably a superior force, and they're giving up the contest for Alpha, although Strangers has lost a lot of health. He's managed to disappear and not take any more damage, and he obviously is going to be able to recover some of that damage, because a smoke screen was deployed up on Omni's side of the Alpha capture point, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a destroyer up there. That could have been Ginger General in the Kuchizov. And I suspect it probably was Ginger General in the Kuchizov, because I'm pretty sure at this point that Omni have completely given up all hope of actually contesting Alpha. And instead, this is actually not terribly bad news for them, even though Odin Mortis do have the early points lead by controlling Alpha at Bravo. Let's not forget, there's a cyclone closing in, and that's going to lower the visibility down to a maximum of 8 kilometers. Uh, that looks a little bit bigger than a Kuchizov smokescreen. It may very well be that Omni do have a destroyer up here with Strangers and Ginger General, but that's still just three ships that we know of, and they are still likely to be heavily outnumbered over here, even though they have managed to inflict some damage on Odin Mortis, but they haven't sunk anything. Oh, some shots coming in from across the map, and yep, momentarily spotted its Ginger General in the Kuchizov, and it did look as if he was heading away and retiring from Alpha, which probably means that Omni are attempting to regroup all of their ships over here in Charlie, ready for when that cyclone arrives, and mass all their firepower, drive right across the middle of the map, take Bravo, and then roll right into Alpha. And of course, Oda Mortis can't afford to let them do that. And that's why the Kleiner in the Chapayev has just used his radar. They cannot afford to allow Omni to get these ships out of there. And while Flambass in the Benson is a very, very juicy target, it's all about killing ships, because that gives you points, and it reduces the number of guns firing back at you, particularly when they're 410mm guns, as on Strangers 123's Amagi, which means Strangers 123 is about to have a very, very bad day. There is just no way he is going to survive this. The radar is out, Flambass is no longer spotted, but Strangers is burning, he's just fired his guns, he's a huge target, and he's dead. The first casualty of the final match. So the early points lead goes to Odin Mortis. However, while they may have the points, let's not forget that that cyclone is about to hit, and that's going to reduce visibility gradually down to a maximum of 8 kilometers. When that hits, the kind of encounters that happen are very short, very brief, and at very short range, and the teams that can maximize their firepower tend to be the ones that do best when the cyclone hits. Odin Mortis, they're ahead on points, 511 to 351, but their team is spread out all across the map, which means that Omni are the ones who are in the best position to take advantage of the reduced visibility caused by the cyclone. They have most of their ships, all mustered up by Charlie. Now they obviously want to wait for visibility to close down before they make any kind of concerted push. Under ideal circumstances they'd wait until visibility had closed down to a maximum of 8 kilometers before they made their move and just rolled straight across the map, hopefully crushing everything before them. But time is not on their side. Odin Mortis have two of the capture points, and the longer the Omni wait to make their move, the more ships Odin Mortis can recall from Alpha to assist in the defense of Bravo. Torpedo salvos being fired. There's Jolinuts in, well, one of the North Carolinas. Now, is this just jockeying for position, or is this Omni going for it? So far we can only see Jolinuts, but there are a couple of smoke screens over there. They could be hiding anything, and there is some fire coming out of those smoke screens, and here come the fighters. They're going to be contesting air superiority and spotting targets over Bravo, and that's more than just Geolinuts. This does look like Omni are not hanging around. 
They're not waiting to recover Ginger General in the Kutuzov. They're not waiting to recover Flambas in the Benson, who has just been spotted by ex Brown's aircraft, by the way. And they're certainly not waiting for Odin Mortis to recover all of the battleships and cruisers that are currently making a beeline from Alpha all the way over to Bravo to reinforce and support the heavily outnumbered defence that is in place over here. Instead, they're going for it right now. And unable to see exactly who's shooting at him, thanks to the reduced visibility afforded by the Cyclone and some great smoke deployed by the destroyers, Radical Larry is in serious trouble. He's piling on the speed and getting the hell out of there. And it's at this precise moment when XTHD in one of the enemy North Carolinas pops up at a range of 8.5 kilometers, fires a broadside salvo right into the side of Larry's Amagi, and he was incredibly lucky to not get deleted right there. But that's about as lucky as Larry the Carry is going to get in this game because he just used his damage control to extinguish a fire and now he's been set on fire again. So that is going to continue to burn for the full duration. Now he can obviously use, and probably should given how much health he's on, use his damage repair ability in order to offset the amount of damage inflicted by that fire but that's still going to leave him a priority target on low health. And is this, is this Omni going for it? They're firing torpedoes around both sides of that central island there, and that's obviously going to have the effect of, while it's not necessarily going to kill anybody, because they are going to be expecting them to be in cover around the side of the island, it is going to keep their heads down and discourage them from poking any further out of these smoke screens than they can. You saw Rhaegor there firing blind into the smoke screen on the other side of the island, as the rest of Odin Mortis's ships who were contesting Alpha, they've left just the one ship over there to hold onto it, rush over, and establish blocking positions around Bravo. They've left Griff over there in the Amagi, and that makes sense because he had already taken a fair amount of damage, they don't want to lose him, and the Amagi's guns can reach clean all the way over to Bravo from Alpha. Meanwhile, holding on to Bravo, Rhaegor is taken an absolute kicking here. It's pretty obvious to me that RNG Sama in the Chapayev on Omni has just used his radar because there's no way these are blind shots. There's a triple torpedo drop. Oh, that is going to cause a lot of hurt. But Omni are not the only team that have a radar ship here, and Decliner has just arrived in his own Chapayev and has almost certainly used it. That's allowed Rhaegor to get a broadside salvo into RNG Sama, and also x has managed to hit him with dive bombers, but RNG Sama has held his fire, he's disappeared into the cyclone again, and there's no way Rhaegor is going to survive this. Nope, he's down. Rhaegor has left the building. And then the radar expires, and nobody can see anybody anymore. Which means now it's pretty much all down to the two carriers. They're going to be sacrificing aircraft at a furious rate in order to try to spot targets for the ships hidden in these smoke screens. Which means anything with wings attached suddenly becomes a priority target, like that fighter squadron there, launched by Farazelis Shikaku. He's down. And it looks like Radical Larry did not actually get spotted. RNG Sama, however, has just popped up, spotted by dive bombers launched by x -Brow, and there are also torpedo bombers going in. It's pretty important that RNG Sama gets taken out, not just because he's an excellent player, but also because his ship carries the all-important radar, which doubles in importance during a cyclone. It's still going to be on cooldown, but they can't afford to let him survive and use it again later in the match. Oh, that is not good news for Radical Larry. Once again, he's been caught in the turn, whole bunch of Omni ships seizing the opportunity, momentarily revealing themselves as they fire their guns, but it's going to be worth it to take Radical Larry out. He's chewed on a torpedo. Larry the Carry has left the building. This is what it's like when you fight in a cyclone. One ship gets spotted, and the enemy team immediately mass their firepower against it. Some of them get spotted while they do so, but the response against them tends to be scattered because you've suddenly got a whole bunch of targets to shoot at, and it's that one ship that gets spotted initially that tends to suffer the most, particularly if the enemy fleet can mass their firepower against it. An Imperator of Chaos in the Kuchizov has also been spotted. He's attracting fire from all quarters. He's laid a smoke screen behind him to attempt to get away, and these are pretty much all blind shots going in against him, but they're only going to need to get lucky once, because he has no health remaining. They've got him! Imperator of Chaos is down! But it's not all going in Omni's favour. Ginger General and Flambass have been spotted, working their way around the flank, trying to regroup up with the rest of Omni's main force. Ginger General is down. Flambass is in serious trouble. He's attracting all kinds of fire. He's hit. One of them did manage to score a torpedo hit. I don't know if it was Ginger General or Flambass. They did manage to clip 
Declinus Japayev with some torpedoes, but it was only one. And of course, with the torpedo spotted, that means Evil Skywalker and the Kutuzov is easily able to avoid them. But it does look like Flambas has managed to evade. He's managed to get the Benson out of there on the other side of that smoke screen, show a clean pair of heels, and lose himself in the cyclone. Meanwhile, the two carriers are once again jockeying for air supremacy and spotting privileges. And Farazella, the Volney, obviously deciding he wasn't going to win that particular encounter, withdraws his fighters into the cyclone and they disappear from view. Odin Mortis have fired some torpedoes into that smoke screen, and that's going to flush out an unlikely target. It's Tortured Torpedo in the Kutuzov, and all guns immediately swing around to bear on him, but a much more important target has just popped up, RNG Sama, in the Chapayev. And this is where we have a bit of a plot twist, because Odin Mortis currently have a 200 point advantage, and despite the fact that those torpedoes were almost certainly spotted by Tortured Torpedo's Kutuzov, XTHD chews on a whole bunch of them anyway. But They've taken out Evil Skywalker. Shots from XTHD's crippled North Carolina takes out Evil Skywalker's Kutuzov. So a whole bunch of things just changed here. Omni have reduced the points lead that Oda Mortis have enjoyed over them this entire game. Not only that, they are now in the process of capturing Bravo, which is denying Oda Mortis the points that were coming in from holding Bravo. Both teams now have the same number of points coming in from captures as each other. Omni do also have a two-ship advantage over Odin Mortis, but the Cyclone has just passed, and all hell is about to break loose. First victim, finally, RNG Sama, taken out by Decliner. Second victim, Griff, hit by a whole bunch of unspotted torpedoes, fired into the smokescreen. Huge armor-piercing salvo from Jolinitz's North Carolina, all the way over the other side of the map, utterly wrecks Decliner, allowing XTHD's North Carolina to finish him off with another armor-piercing salvo. And just in case you missed it in all the confusion, Van der Decken, in one of the two surviving Bensons on Odin Mortis' team, just managed to finish off. You can see him coming under furious return fire there from Elrog, in the only surviving Benson destroyer on Omni's team because Van der Decken just killed Flambas. But the plot twists are not even close to being over just yet. Watch those torpedoes heading down the side of the island next to the Bravo capture point. Bam! There we go. Tortured torpedoes, Kutches off, just ran into a salvo fired by van der Decken once again. And XTHD has just died, a victim of, believe it or not, a posthumous kill from Decliner's Chapaya, who managed to set him on fire before being sunk. So that effectively leaves, since both of the aircraft carriers are combat ineffective after having run out of aircraft, two destroyers against one destroyer and a battleship. Now, if you're in a random battle, you'd probably be thinking, well, I wouldn't want to be in a battleship if there were two destroyers on the enemy team. I was on very, very low health, and I didn't have a carrier to use aircraft to spot those destroyers for me. But this is not a random battle. Geolinuts in the North Carolina knows that the legend begins as just fired his torpedoes. He just chewed on at least one of them. He also knows that there are barely three minutes of this game left. And with that little time remaining, and Odin Mort is still enjoying a 300-point advantage, the time for caution is over. They need to sink a ship, and they need to sink one fast. And with that crossfire coming in from Geolinuts over there in the North Carolina, well, it looks like they've decided that Van der Decken is going to be that lucky ship. He's the one they can see, he's the one they're all shooting at. He's attempting to open the range on Elrog, but his engine's been hit and crippled. He obviously still has the last stand skill, so he's able to keep moving. And the legend begins, makes a very, very desperate decision. Seeing Geolinuts firing at Van der Decken in an effort to keep him alive, he tries to draw some attention away from him, but he's not going to like the kind of attention that he receives from Geolinuts' North Carolina. With 2 minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock, and 3 points coming in every 5 seconds for holding on to Alpha, Odin Mortis just needed to keep their two destroyers alive for another 35 seconds. And now it's all gone horribly, horribly wrong. Now it's all down to Van der Decken. X Brow and the Shikaku can't do a thing to help other than avoid being seen and sunk. Van der Decken, aware that he must stay alive, is no longer returning fire at Elrog's Benson. He's just trying to outrun him and get out of detection range. Elrog isn't going to catch him because he's broadside on to maximise the amount of guns that he can bring to bear, and it looks like that last shot did, once again, knock out Van der Decken's engine. But it was too little too late. Van der Decken's done it, he's managed to get out of detection range, and now that he's no longer being shot at, he uses his damage control to fix his engine, pops some torpedoes in the direction of Elrog, anticipating that Elrog is going to be burning rubber in order to reacquire him as a target and find him as fast as he possibly can. 
And then another plot twist. Elrog has just captured Bravo. And then another plot twist. Geolivus has just begun the capture of Alpha. So with Alpha in the process of being captured, Oda and Mortis are now stuck on 968 points. They have no more points coming in from captures. But it's still not going to be enough for Omni. Even if they held all three of the capture points right now, and they will soon, with only a minute and a half of this game left, they're not going to collect enough points quickly enough to win before the timer runs out. They still have to find and kill either x in the Shikaku or Van der Decken in the Benson. And Elrog spotted him again. Now Van der Decken has to be torn here. Do I return fire or do I just attempt to play it safe and get the hell out of here? So he pops a couple of shots in Elrog's direction, takes some crossfire from the other side of the map from Jolinuts, drops his smoke screen and just concentrates on getting the hell out of there. He only has to stay alive for another 40 odd seconds. Xbrow over there at the top of the screen in the Shikaku trying to dig a hole into the map border in an effort to avoid being seen and sunk. Because at this point Omni cannot afford, they do not have the luxury of picking and choosing their targets. The first ship that they see is the one they're going to have to shoot at. And once again that's Van der Decken. At this point Van der Decken is completely out of options, there's nowhere for him to hide anymore. So he has to turn and attempt to silence Elrog before he finishes him off. And there's the cross map salvo from Geolinuts in the North Carolina. Very, very effective. Van der Decken desperately swings the ship around the other way, drives it right into the map border with five seconds left on the clock and 128 health remaining. That is one destroyer high explosive shells worth of damage. But then the clock runs out, the timer expires, the match is over and Van der Decken has done it. Oda Mortis have won by the skin of their teeth. And I really do mean by the skin of their teeth. I, I can't see how this game could have been any closer than it was. With 128 health remaining, all it took was for Elrog to hit Van der Decken with one destroyer 5 inch high explosive shell. Van der Decken would have died, and let's not forget what happens to the points if you lose a ship in competitive play, if you lose a destroyer, the team that kills the destroyer gains 40 points, and the team that had the destroyer sunk loses 60 points, which means Oda Mortis won this game 968 points to 909 points, but for the want of one destroyer 5 inch high explosive shell, those scores would have been 949 to 908 in favour of Omni. And that is how Omni lost, and Oda Mortis became the new kings of the sea. Hope you enjoyed today's video folks, and if you want to see more games like this you really do need to start watching the Kings of the Sea tournament on Twitch. I'll be advertising them as and when the details of the future matches become available. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.